Okay, so this is Gonzo. Gonzo's a little shih tzu, and we're doing a summer cut on Gonzo today. So, I, you know, I, I have a video already that explains the difference in the guard blades between a military summer and a puppy cut. This is a, it's a, a snap-on, not a snap-on, it's a clip-on. So it doesn't just snap like those plastic ones do. It actually clips into place. It's a wall. I'm using a number two for his summer cut and a 30 blade. I always want to use a 30 because it gets to the chase a little bit better for me, a little bit quicker than a 10 would because it's got more depth on it, right? The 30 does. I 99% of the time I'm going to do the cut before I'm going to do the bath because I want to get rid of all that fur. You know, I don't want to have to clean and dry it and then get rid of it. And so he's coming to me pretty clean too. That helps. And she's on a regular schedule. The reason that I start in the back most of the time is because I move the opposite direction with my guard blade because I get a cleaner, quicker, closer cut that way. So I like to keep him leashed in front, keep him open and back as long as he holds still for me. I'm going to start right back here at the back. I want to show you something on pause real quick that make it real easy because it's too easy to catch that, right? It's too easy to catch it up in there. So if you start about halfway back on your guard blade on that paw, you getting this, loop? Yep. About halfway back. Start scooping in halfway at the halfway point on your guard blade. You won't catch those paws. And I, because I just want to show you some few things on this, I really don't know that you'd want to walk through a whole summer cut, but let's do it because you can fast forward on your end if you want to. I'm holding this flat against, coming around the back way first, flat against the skin. I want to get it as deep as close, as clean of a cut as I can in one felt swoop. Uh, another thing is, you know, you can use a, a exposed blade for this too. They sell those. Uh, I know all the different brands probably have them. And I have done that before. I've bought a three-quarter blade um, to do a puppy cut with just the blade itself. There's two things about that. You, if you're working with an exposed blade, you have to cool it a lot more often because it heats up. In this case, I've got a guard blade on it, so I don't have to worry about that heating up on me, and I can just keep on in motion. I'm going to push that Achilles out toward me, from the back side toward me, so I can get a nice close cut on that, bringing that straight up through that round. I'm not going to get the inner thighs because I shaved those, so I don't want to take double time on myself. Up see daisy. So here I come back up through here. Watch that skin fold right there. You can get that caught in between your guard blades, your teeth on your blade, and actually catch that and clip it. And then the other thing too about exposed blades is that if you break one of the teeth on your blade, I want to show you something. If you break one of these teeth, in the middle, that blade's done. It's finished. You cannot use it again because it can catch skin in there too easily. If you break a tooth on the end, you can still use it, but it's going to slow down your whole process. So that's why I would much rather work with guard blades. It's easier and they protect my, my uh, blade itself. But when you put that on in place, make sure it's locked in well because if you turn it on and it's not, it will catch a tooth. So if these are bent, you're going to have a problem. So I, I recommend not letting those hit the ground. I spin you back around, guys. So sorry about that, buddy. Okay, so back to this. See, I can get this done the first time. I won't have to do a second cut on him afterwards because I'm doing such a thorough job on the first cut. I mean, once in a while, you got to do those second cuts. Okay, so back around here, anything I missed, I want to get it. I'm going to come on down like that. Even though I'm coming back through for a sanitary cut, I'm not going to take all that fur. So I'm going to go ahead and get rounded out here, rounded out there, going for his other paw. His back paw. I come up like that. I come around to the side. Come around to this side. Now I'll turn him for you. Okay, Luke, can you get all this? Here we go, Gonzo. Get the hair out of the way. Again, starting 
partially back on my blade, on my on my guard blade. Partially back. I don't want to get those teeth to catch one of those. I want to avoid that the tip of those teeth catching the nail and pulling it along with it. Another thing to watch for is on these back paws, sometimes dogs do have dew claws back there. It's not often, but you'll find it on some dogs, so it's unexpected. So when you're rolling up this way, if you're catching on to something, stop and take a look and make sure that's not a dew claw that you're pulling out through there. I'm going to turn him back around. I'm going to hold him up back here. I'm going to Gonzo. He's such a good boy. He is. He's, he's Gonzo. He's on board. We have another dog on board that we had to take with us today because the lady ran an errand and didn't get back in time. <laughs> So he's kind of rolling with us right now. <laughs> that doesn't usually ever happen. In fact, this is a first. Okay, so I'm coming. I'm going to stretch that out a little on this side because I can. Because of my angle. I don't want to get that, that fold right there. Go around that fold. Remember that it's there. I like to go both ways on that. We got this foot coming on the inside a little. Not much because I'm shaving it. Running it on up. Running, keeping it flat to the surface again. You see, I don't have to cool my blade either in between. I don't have to keep popping it off and cooling it. He's got clean enough fur. I don't have to clean my blade. I don't have to cool it. I just beat all that. So I'm staying in constant motion with him getting this job done. If I have to break, he does too, right? He loses focus too, and his attention will go astray on me. Front paw. If you ever have a problem getting these front paws done because they're petty about it, then start up higher. Start up a little higher and work your way down because they kind of desensitizes their arm. In his case, he's letting me get my job done because he's an expert at this, aren't you, Gun? So... He's an absolute expert. So here, I'm going to hold that dew claw in because he's got a dew claw over here. I can feel it right there. I don't want to catch that right, and it's too hard for me to remember it the whole time. So I'm just going to hold it in place with my index finger and go around it. I like to hold my clippers at the head of my clippers because I have the utmost control over them instead of holding them way down here. You can see the difference here. It's a real, makes it huge. So you want to hold it at the head. Here we go, Gonzo. So arms are a pain because, arms and legs, because seem like they never come down close enough um, with the rest of the body. It just seems like it takes longer, and it does. So I'm going up this way. I'm going to hold this paw up. I'm going to come around the back side like that. I want to get as close as I can with my clippers. I want my clippers to do most of this work for me. So now here we go again. I'm going to pull his skin. Pull folds, pull skin. Pull it tight wherever you need to. And always have a firm, firm grip on him, on your dog, because it makes them feel more secure. They know you're in control. You keep a firm grip on them. You can move them around easier. They understand that you're in control. That's important for them to know that. So that they don't try to take over. Okay, so we got, I'm going to go on the inner arm here. Again, one more time. Uh, another way you can beat this sometimes is to take a, is to go with a military cut on their legs. Bring it in quicker, but it, you'll see the difference. Okay, I'm coming up through there. I'm going to go to this paw. See, I got him in my position. Starting again at the middle, of halfway back on my teeth. Oops. Hold his paw firm. I got his index. And again, I'm holding his dew claw with my index finger here. So I don't catch it and I can get all that hair around it. Some of these dew claws can be real loose and they're easy to catch, especially on the backs. Okay, I'm just coming back through here again. I'm getting, I don't want to spend too much time under the arm. I shave those, always. 
Back to the call up here. See, he doesn't really want to let me keep finishing. It's okay, Gun, so you're doing the public a favor because you're showing how to get a summer cut done, Gun. So I'm going to come up this way. Look, there is nothing perfect um, dog grooming. There's just, there's different ways to do the same thing. This is my way of doing a summer cut on Gonzo. Okay, so I'm going to come up through here, through his backside. I just want to hit any areas that I missed. And now I need to get to his neckline and his head. And this is real important with every dog to be sure to remove that collar and check that neckline. Always under here because I have found some really exposed open wounds um, that were hidden. Sorry, hidden wounds that were really bad over an uh, owner not taking the, le the collar off ever and a fuzzy dog that didn't get groomed enough and they were outside a lot and there was a really bad wound under there. I'm going to use this collar for now to get so I can keep him in the direction I need him in. She likes him real close around his muzzle and in order for me to get that look I'm going to show you a quick easy way to get that and avoid scissors. A lot of scissor work. Like I said, I don't want to do much under that arm because I'm coming back through. If you really need to get under here, here's another way to do it. Lift your dog up. Throw that right through there then. I don't want to do too much back here because I did it mostly. And I also shave all that area. I don't like it. I like them to look real clean. You see, I'm having a little rough time. Sorry, guys. Getting back here, I can lift this this way. I'm just going to show you different ways you can get to the same area if you need to. Let's say he, you can't lift the front end and, he, and you can't lift this back end or the front end or anything else. Lift him from behind like that. You can get that job done again. There's just, you got to out with the, the witter. <laughs> I'm going to get this arm a little bit better. It looks like I might have missed that in there. I think I did, Gonzo. I think I did. Try to stay uniform with your grooms. That way you don't miss spots. In other words, if you start at the back, stay at the back, work your way up. But if you run into issues with a dog, you can't get one area done, come back to it or get it done in the bathtub. I'm going to show you one of those grooms here shortly that I have to get done in the bathtub while their face is wet to get their face done. Okay, so now I want to come up through here, right? I don't know if he's going to hold still for me or not. If he doesn't, then I'm going to booty him up. But if he will, that's great. Let's see how he does. Oh, thank you, Gonzo. He's a good boy. He's a very good boy. Uh, let me start over on this side for you, Lucas, since that's where you're at. All I'm doing is coming back up where I left off. In all that in order for Gonzo. Behind these ears, I like to come up. Oops, sorry. Sorry, buddy. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I like to. He doesn't, so forget about that. We'll get that another way. I'll probably have to either take scissors or a number 10 to that. I like to get that hair around the ear down low, around the canals. So here we go. Back up this way. I'm just hitting anything I've missed. And I can definitely see the difference. These uh, clippers are really nice too. These are Andy's clippers. They're the cordless. They're just as powerful. They're just as fast. Get yourself, if you're just starting out, get yourself some good clippers. I'm going to put together a video show you what you need. What you really just have to have to start grooming. Just your basic essentials that you have to have. Coming on back up this way, guys. Right on through here, buddy. He's just a very good boy. Now I'm gonna now I'm gonna get it. Now see all it took was taking another second there, letting him settle down from that, getting him repositioned, and another sometimes you just say that's all it takes to get that same job done. If you have a hard time around the mouth, check their teeth. The older the dog gets, the worse their teeth get if they're not kept up, you know, with dental. And that can be really uncomfortable and you'll feel them pulling away from you a lot. And you want to check that because 
know, that is uncomfortable. You want to be aware of that area where to be tender and gentle. So with his face, because, she, and I'm going to come back down through here too. She likes his, not everything real short, but definitely around his mouth. So I'm actually going to switch out to a military blade to get, I'm just coming back through here cleaning up anything I'm seeing that I don't like. I'm going over to head, Gonzo. Forward ahead, buddy. Okay, so everything I do is the opposite direction again. On him. Some dogs you want to go the same direction, especially if they got loose curly hair, real loose curly hair, you might want to go the same direction so you don't take too much off. So I'm going this way and that. I am for Gonzo. I'm going to lift that ear. I'm going to come back through. Hang on, guys. And since you can see how he is about his face, I really want to make this go as simple and easy as possible. So, and I need to get that cut in, right? I need to get it done. I need to get it in and done. So what I'm going to do is switch out to a military. 